Hello and welcome. I am in my garden and as promised, I am showing y'all an update of what's going on, what's growing, what I got going on. And before we even get started, I'm going to just say that my area is not clean and I was like waiting on it to be clean. I might not do this video, so y'all going to get what y'all going to get today. So in the mess in advance but I think it's time to let y'all see what's going on in this garden because it is thriving and I'm so proud of the progress thus far so let's get started we have all my plant babies from inside my house outside now because they just love being outside in the summertime and in all honesty they grew so much last summer that I am struggling for space inside for them. So I'm happy to bring them out when I can. This little plant baby, the storm the other day, knocked it over and I lost this right here. But that's okay. We have plenty of new growth still happening. So yeah, this is what I was talking about it needs to be cleaned up. But we ain't gonna, we ain't gonna worry about that right now. All right, more of my indoor plant babies. I was happy to find this citronella at Home Depot not too long ago. And then this big one, this yucca, spineless yucca, is something that I keep inside too during the winter time. But let's get started on the actual garden. And if you remember, <laughs> I put these plants in and I did my little time lapse of everything I was putting in this bed. And my cucumbers are doing so well. This year, usually they get a disease, um, powdery mildew, and then they start to get that wilt too, but not this year. I feel like if they were gonna get it, they would be getting it already. It could be something that happens in July late july mid july too but we'll see but i've been actually treating my cucumbers with um a baking soda water and dish soap concoction to keep the surface of the leaves at a neutral ph so that they don't get any powdery mildew and i've actually been picking the cucumbers at a early stage so this one that I just showed you I will actually probably pick that today because as I said on my post I recently learned that you're not supposed to pick your cucumbers or let them stay on the vine until they're fully ripened because they will think that they have done their job and start to die back so I've been picking my cucumbers early, probably earlier than I need to, but I don't wanna take no chances. So I'm gonna get these two today as well. But we have lots of cucumbers coming in and I'm so, so happy because we, <laughs> we probably got a handful of cucumbers last year. Now this cucumber plant right here is not one that I started on my own. We got it from our community garden here in the city. And I don't know what they give their cucumbers or maybe it's a different variety, but ain't none of mine doing what that one is doing. These bugs right here, if you can see it, these bugs are called earwig bugs and they have been destroying my lettuce I'm gonna show you what the lettuce is looking like I will not be eating this I'm gonna probably just pull it up at some point but then again I'm like should I just leave it there because that gives the bug something to focus on and not the other stuff that it's not eating currently so I don't know what I'm gonna do with that lettuce I may leave it in but I'm thinking about pulling it up also I have cauliflower broccoli and brussels sprouts in this bed and as you can see they are being eaten 
terribly bad this year too and i usually don't even try to grow brassicas for this reason because i don't want to go through the hassle of covering it up with netting and all the things so i just left it exposed and go through and try to pick off anything that i see but there's so many leaves i don't probably get all of them obviously don't get all of them and i'm not super consistent about doing it it starts looking like it's looking but i did get some broccoli the broccoli was not like a head of broccoli it was small and it was loose it wasn't compacted but this is my second one coming up so but it tasted really good this little patch right here is definitely being eaten too um i have a pepper plant in there I, this is a bed i was just throwing all kinds of stuff together because i had learned about polyculture and was gonna try something like that these are huge and strong and very happy about that we got some herbs down here this is thyme dill and i don't know what this is it's not milkweed another pepper plant with a little flower on it but yeah i have herbs and stuff all throughout the pepper plants and lettuce and was just trying to intermix stuff to make sure that i'm utilizing all the space that i can and it worked out for the most part these are onions of course and they are small and floppy and they even after a good rain they still are floppy um and last year when i did onions they only got about this big so i don't know what i'm doing wrong i've been fertilizing and stuff and i was like well do i need to cut the green part down to make sure that the energy is going to the bulb but then i was reading that it really didn't matter so i left it and i don't know i just have not been doing getting good results i also was experimenting with spooning which is when you loosen the dirt up around the onion and so that gives it more easy it's more easy for it to expand in the dirt if the dirt is loose around it because the dirt that i have in my beds is actually very very compacted but i don't see that it's making a difference so i don't know but let's continue our tour i also have onions and dill this is just weeds over here but this is onions and dill and then this is turnips and i don't know when you, this is my first time growing turnips so i don't know when can you see that i don't know when you're supposed to uh harvest turnips but i know you can eat the greens i have not um looked into when to harvest uh -oh. when to harvest the turnips this is echinacea oregano i think this is hyssop but i'm not sure strawberry leaves because the strawberries are gone i only got a handful of those these are celery celery canna lily flowers of course tomato with basil tomato with basil and then this is dill but it also has some onions down in there i think these are doing just as good as the ones that don't have anything intermixed so i'm like um maybe it was i was thinking maybe it was because it was fighting for nutrients from the deal but i saw that it's good to interplant like they go well together you can intercrop those and they do well together so that's what i did but then um my onions are small but since the other ones that don't have the deal are still the same size i know it's not because of the deal that they're not doing well here i have chives that need something to drink they looking thirsty and celery okay i'll see ya and then tomatoes so of course i got 
my trellis idea off of the internet and I got all the stuff well the hooks the little C clips these right here can you see them my little clips right here I got off Amazon along with the string things and then the wood and the brackets I got from Home Depot but this is called I honestly don't know what it's called um, but this is what I'm trying this year so this is usually a pro something you would do for your indeterminate tomatoes so the ones that will just keep going and going and going typically Roma and, tom uh, and cherry tomatoes you don't do this to because you do not take them down to one main stem you just let the suckers grow but I made the mistake of not labeling every single plant so when it was time to put them out here I didn't know what was what I just had tomatoes with tomatoes and didn't know if it was a beef steak or Roma or cherry and I'm pretty sure those are the three that I did this year this one is clearly beef steak but if you look at this like is that a cherry tomato or is it gonna turn into like a slicing tomato so I don't know my point is you are not supposed to take the suckers off of cherry and Roma tomatoes because I think they're determinate but I could be wrong but anything that's determinate do not take the suckers off if it's indeterminate then you want to train it up a trellis and I do that by using the C strip or C clips and taking the suckers off. But I haven't been taking the suckers off, like I said, because I'm not fully sure what the varieties are at this stage. So I'm trying to just wait and see if I can make sure before I try plucking stuff off because I get a little heavy handed when it comes to pruning stuff so I have to let myself uh, <laughs> make myself chill these are green beans we got a handful of green beans already and then I have this one yep I was going to say that was a pepper plant but it's not this is a pepper plant, but it's struggling. I think it's getting too much shade. It has a little flower, but because it's so small, I'm going to take it off and let it focus on getting big. My husband said that when they start to flower and produce fruit, they like double in size. But um, I don't know about that. So I'm going to make sure it focuses on getting big first. Well, we'll see if it gets big at all. I might try his way with one, but I haven't yet. I've been just taking them off, the flowers off of the little plants because that's what I read. Anyway, so then we have the basil down the middle of each bed and it's doing okay it's overcrowded of course but I've done it like this before and they did fine so maybe I just need to give them more time before they start looking something like this but I've already been picking it and out picking this basil in it already it tastes good still but um yeah got some plants down this line And that's everything. This is our pear tree that never produces. It produces pears. Look. Here's a pear. Can you see it? Oh, wait. Here's a pear. But they only ever get that big and they're super hard. So that's our contribution to the squirrels end up getting that. And then look at this. This little voluntary mullen I want the flowers to open so I can make some ear oil with the 
flowers from the mulling. Um, yeah, this one over here seems to have escaped the pests for the most part. Oh, nope, I lied. Look, <laughs> that's because I don't be keeping an eye on this one because I forget about it over here in this corner. And this is late bone set. Yep, so yeah, but for the most part, it's doing okay. I believe this is a Brussels sprout plant. And I'm just letting it go. And then over here in the tire is weeds. But this right here is. Be real quick about it. Okay. So you saw that. My husband's friend that lives down south told him to fertilize with your food scraps in a big trash can. And then put water on it and let it sit. And then when it's ready. After when you first started you do that and then you let it sit for two weeks and then you're supposed to water your garden with it and whatever you know with your watering can you put it down in there and then cut it with water half and half and then fertilize that way and he says that it works wonders for his garden and I've done it once but honey it does not stink when the top is on it but <laughs> when the top ain't on it and you trying to work it through your garden baby mm -mm. It stinks so bad. I told my husband, he's going to have to be the one to do that because I'm not going to be able to do it. I can't handle it. The smell is so strong. And I'm like, well, if he decides he ain't going to do it, it's just sitting there and we have to get rid of it. Where are we going to put that at? Because that is so nasty. It's so gross. Yeah, that's our backyard garden. Thank you for joining me for this little tour of our backyard. I appreciate you being here. And if you like this video, you will definitely like this one. Peace.